I'm Adolph Oliver, and this is the video clip where we're going to talk about using the reverse foil process to be able to factor trinomials like this one I've shown you here. But here's the requirement. Reverse foil works for trinomials that have a nice plus one in front of the square term. Well, you see this x squared right here? You don't see a sign or a number, so uh, we assume simply that uh, it's a plus and a one, and this is what the reverse foil works with. Now, remember that what we're doing when we factor trinomials is, in effect, we're unmultiplying them. So what I'm going to do is show you three examples. Here's the first one right here where we're going to start out with two binomials, x plus 2 times x plus 3, and we'll multiply those out using the regular FOIL method. And then I'll show you how we can pretend that if we don't know where these came from, we can just look at this answer and construct where they had to come from. In other words, unmultiplying or factoring. Now, there are lots of different methods that folks have dreamed up to do this. Uh, this is the one I prefer because I can get to the answer real quickly, but let's do this demonstration for you first here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is multiply uh, this guy out, and I'll do it over here. Remember the FOIL method. The F means you take the two firsts and multiply them together. X times X is X squared. Okay, then I go get the two last, plus 2 times plus 3, okay, is plus 6. And then I put in the rainbows here to remind me what the O and the I are from FOIL. The big rainbow is the outer product, plus 3 times X plus 3X. Remember, you just multiply together the things at the end of the rainbow. The little rainbow here is the inner product. And it is plus 2x. Well, since these are like terms, we can combine them. They're both x to the first power. Plus 3 and plus 2 gives me a total of plus 5x. Okay, well, this is what we got multiplying these two binomials out. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to depend that we don't know what these guys are here. And we're only going to look at this. And I'm going to show you how we can look at this answer and unmultiply it just by the information that's in this answer. Okay, here we go. The first thing we're going to do is get optimistic and say, okay, I think we can do this. So I'm going to sketch in a couple of parents here, and we'll fill the binomials in. Well, it's not too hard to see that since the first guy here in the trinomials x squared, but you've got to have x's in both of the leading terms here of your two binomials. It'll be your answer. x times x, of course, gives you x squared. Now, we're going to work from left to right here. The next thing we do is figure out what the signs are going to be in here. And here's how you go about doing this particular process. You home in on the sign of the last term in the trinomial, the plain number. This is a plus 6, so the sign is plus. Well, you ask yourself, what signs do you have to multiply together to get a plus? Well, you can either multiply two pluses, or you can multiply two minuses. So this would either be plus plus or minus minus. Well, it's real easy to see which one is correct. All you do here is you turn around and take the sign of the center term, which happens to be plus, and see who it matches. Well, the plus here matches these pluses, so that means the signs are going to be plus and plus. Okay, the next step. We're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 6. So I call this, we want two numbers. Okay, but besides multiplying to give me 6, you see the plus right in front? The plus means sum, so that means I also want the sum of those two numbers to be the number that's in the center term here. Now, we don't worry about the sign. 
We'll be doing the signs in a little bit here. In fact, we got them already. Anyway, here we go. What two numbers multiply together to give you six, whose sum is also five? Well, numbers are three and two. Three times two gives you six. Three plus two gives you five, so it passes both of the requirements. Now notice, the signs are the same here, so the three and two can go anywhere you want because uh, they'll both be behind plus signs. So let's say I felt like putting the three here and the two over here. Okay, well now, compare this to what we started with. Remember, of course, that multiplication obeys the commutative law. So x plus 2 times x plus 3 will give you the same answer as x plus 3 times x plus 2. Okay, well now, let's move down and look at the next guy that we can play this game with. Here, instead of having x plus 2 and x plus 3, I've got x minus 2 and x minus 3. Both of them are negative. Well, the first thing we're going to do again is multiply this out using FOIL so we can get the answer, and then I can show you how you can go back to what we started with. Okay, multiply the two first together. We get x squared. Multiply the two lasts here. Minus 2 times minus 3 gives me plus 6. And then do the two rainbows again, the O and the I. The big rainbow, we get negative 3x. The little rainbow, negative 2x. Okay, well, these are like terms, x to the first power, so we can combine them. Negative 2 minus 3 is a total of negative 5x. Okay, what we're going to do again is exactly what we did earlier here. We're going to pretend we don't know where this answer right here came from. And we're just going to work on this answer to show you how you can get back to the two binomials you originally multiplied. In other words, when we multiply this way, the process we're talking about is unmultiplying it, which people more commonly call factoring. Okay, once again, let's be optimistic that we can do this. Make our double set of parents. Since we have x squared to begin with here, that means we got to have x to the first power in both of these. So, of course, when you multiplied the first together, you'd get the x squared. Then we're going to go after the signs right here. Again, you look at the sign of the last term in the trinomial. It's a plus. Well, what two signs do you have to multiply together to give you a plus? Either two pluses or two minuses will do. How do we decide between these? We'll look at the sign of the center term, and whichever one that matches, in this case the minuses, that means that's what we use. So we'll have both the minuses here. Okay, next thing we do is play our two number game. I want two numbers multiplied together, give me six. The plus in front here again means I also want the sum of these guys to equal whatever number the coefficient is of the center term. So two numbers multiplied together give me 6 whose sum is 5. Well that's the favorite 3 and 2 that we had before. But now of course notice when we put these in the binomials since the signs are both the same you can put them wherever you want. Let's say I feel like putting the 2 here and the 3 here. Well, if you multiplied this out, you'd get exactly this guy. And of course, what this does is it does match what we started with right there. Okay, well, the key here is, is this reverse FOIL method I'm showing you. What it's doing is just reversing the regular FOIL multiplication process. Okay, let's look at the last one down here. And notice in this one now, I've got x plus 2 times x minus 3. One is positive and one is negative. Well, once again, we're going to multiply this out and then pretend we don't know where it came from. Multiply the two first together. x times x gives me x squared. Multiply the two last together. Plus 2 times minus 3. Well, plus and minus give me a negative. 
3 times 2 is 6, so it's negative 6. Now, we need to get the center term for multiplying it out, so I make the two rainbows to imitate the O and the I, the big rainbow, negative 3 times X, okay, that's what the big rainbow gives me. The little rainbow, plus 2 times X, well, okay, that's plus 2X. Okay, again, they're like terms, so I can combine them. I got plus 2 and minus 3. Well, that means what I have is minus 1 of these X's. Okay, now what we're going to do is work on just this answer to see how we can get the original guy over here. Well, here it goes. First thing we're going to do again is make our double set of parents. And we have our favorite x squared here, so that means we got x's in the leading guys. Now we're going to go after the signs that come here. But notice, instead of having a plus here on the end, we got a minus. How do you turn around and multiply two signs together to give you a minus? Well, you either take plus times minus or minus times plus. In other words, you need one of each of these. Now, <coughs> The method I'm going to show you here, it doesn't matter where you put the plus and minus here right now. Let's say I feel like putting the minus in the first guy and the plus in the second. As long as you've got one of each, when that multiplies out, it'll give you this minus, so we're good. So, let's continue on here. Again, we play the same old two numbers game. Okay, I want two numbers multiplied together to give me 6. But now, you see the minus in front of the 6 here? That means I now want the difference of those guys to be. And again, just look at the number in the center term here. So, here we go. Two numbers that multiply together to give me 6. But we want the difference to only be 1. Well... Guess what? No surprise, it's our old friends 3 and 2 here. But now, there's something different here than what we had before. Now you cannot just take and put the 3 and 2 wherever you want, because one of them is going to go behind a minus, the other one behind a plus, and you've actually got to get them in the correct place, okay, to get the correct answer. Well, this is not difficult to do. I've invented what I call the bigger game here. Who's bigger, three or two? Well, three is bigger, isn't it? The bigger number has to go with the sign that matches the center term. Well, the three is the bigger number between three and two, and so the bigger number has to go behind the minus. Where did I put the minus? Oh, I put it right here. So that means the 3 goes there and the 2 goes over here. So there it is, right in the button. You can see that we add x minus 3 times x plus 2 when we first multiplied this out. Well, okay, these are the basics then of how we're going to do this. And uh, the nice thing about the reverse foil is if you follow the process and if the trinomial here is indeed factorable, uh, you can home into it pretty quick. So let's now take a look at some examples of uh, doing this. And uh, you'll be doing a lot of work with this reverse foil. And remember, again, if you know a similar process that works for you, as long as you can factor them correctly and do it fairly quick, that's perfectly fine. Okay, notice the requirement here is that we have a nice plus one in front of the squared term. Okay, that's met. There's no GCF to pull out here. We always have to look for that. So here's what I'm going to do. Say, okay, we're going to go right to come up with the answer on this. We're going to unmultiply this and come up with the two original binomials. Okay, since we have x squared in front, that means I'm going to have x's, okay, in the leading terms here. Now, the next thing we do is we go after the signs. Well, what do you have to multiply to get a plus? Either double plus or double minus. Who are you going to take? Well, you look at the sign of the center term. 
And since the center term matches the negative ones, that means that's what you do. You put in the negatives. Now, the next thing we do is we play the two-number game. I want two numbers multiplied together. Give me 32. The plus in front of here means that I want their sum to also be the uh, 12 right here. Okay, well, remember, if there's a plus in front, we want sum. If there's a minus in front, we want difference. So you'll bump into both of those as we go along. Well, what two numbers multiply together give me 32? Well, 2 times 16 does. But the sum of 2 and 16 is 18. That doesn't match this. Let's see, what else could we do? Oh, we could do 4 times 8. Hmm? 4 times 8 is 32. What's the sum of 4 and 8? 12. Bingo. There it is. So our winning combination are the numbers 4 and 8. Well, since the signs are the same, drop them wherever you want. Let's say I feel like putting the 8 there and the 4 there. There it is factored. If you were to multiply it back out, you'd get the original guy. Okay, next one up here. We've got y squared plus y minus 90. Okay, what we're going to do here is factor it exactly the same way. Notice there's no GCF. And we have officially a plus 1 in front of the squared term. So that means we can go ahead and try factoring this uh, with reverse FOIL. Now remember, not every trinomial is factorable. How do you know that you have one that's not factorable? Well, when you play the two-number game, or try to, and you can't come up with two numbers that work in your case, then that means it's not factorable. Well, okay, let's see what happens here. I got y squared now, so that means I got to have y's in the first uh, terms. Now, to get the sign coming up next, you see that minus? I often just say what we want is one of each of the signs. A plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus, multiplied together, give you the minus. Okay, put them wherever you feel like. Let's say you feel like putting the plus here. And the minus here. Remember, we'll play the bigger game in a moment to get the numbers in the right place. Okay, now, here we go. I want two numbers. Okay, multiply together, give me 90. But now, the minus sign here means I want the difference. And notice, there's no number in front of the variable here in the center term. So, we could put a 1 there if we want. So we want the difference to be 1. Well, this is not hard. But what two numbers multiply together give you 90? And the uh, difference happens to be 1. How about 10 and 9? Now, notice that the signs are different. So that means we got to be careful where we put everybody. And that's when we play the bigger game. The 10 is bigger than the 9. And it has to have in front of it the sign of the center term. So, okay, that means the 10 has to have a plus in front of it. Well, this is where I put the plus, so the 10 has to go here, and the other number, the 9, goes in the only hole that's left. Okay, there is a factorization there. Once you get some practice on this, the uh, reverse FOIL method uh, works real nice, and you can generally do it pretty quick. Okay, here we are again. First off, there's no GCF to pull out, and we have the required plus 1 in front of the x squared, so this is a candidate to try reverse FOIL on. So once again, here's my double sets of parents. Since I have x squared to begin with, that means I've got x's in the start of both of these. The next thing we do is go after the signs in the binomials. And those signs would multiply together to give you this last guy here. So since he's negative, again, we're going to have 1 plus and 1 minus. So I usually just say 1 of each. Okay, well, let's say this time I feel like putting the minus here and the plus here. Just make sure you have 1 of them plus and 1 of them minus. Okay, once you do this, it's time for the two-number game. Okay, the minus in front means I also want the difference to be 2. So here we go. I want two numbers 
multiply together give me 24 whose difference is 2 well 3 times 8 won't work the difference is 5 how about 6 times 4 I think that works doesn't it 6 times 4 is 24 and what's the difference between 6 and 4 2 yep we got a winner now again since the signs are one of each. Anytime you have signs one of each, you're going to have to play the bigger game. Six is bigger than four, so the bigger guy has to have the sign of the center term right here, which is minus. So the six has to go with a minus. Where did I put the minus? Right here. Okay, and the four goes in the other hole that's left. Okay, well, as we keep working some of these, you should be getting the idea again. Like so much of the algebra, uh, none of this stuff is uh, difficult to do. All you have to do is just remember all the little methods uh, individually. They're not hard to calculate. Okay, here's another one. m squared plus 9m plus 14. It's a trinomial. There's no GCF. We got the plus 1 in front. So uh, let's give it a try and see if it's factorable. Again, you won't know whether it is until you play the two-number game. If you get two numbers that work, then it's factorable. If you can't find two numbers to work, then it's not. Okay, this one has m squared to begin with, so that means we're going to have m's in the first terms. Now, to get the signs, we look at the sign on the plain number at the end of the trinomial. It's a plus, so the only way you can get a plus is multiply two pluses or multiply two minuses. Well, the center term here is positive. It matches the two plus, so there we go. Now, time for the two number game. We want two numbers. Multiply together, give me 14, whose sum, now why did I pick sum? Because this was a plus. If it had been a minus, I would have said difference. So we want two numbers that multiply together to give me 14, and also who sum to 9. Well, again, this is not hard. I think it's 7 and 2, isn't it? 7 times 2 is 14. And what's the sum of 7 and 2? Remember, we're doing sum here. It's 9. Well, since the signs are the same, it doesn't matter where you put these guys. They're both going to be behind pluses. So let's say I feel like putting the 2 there and the 7 right there. And there's our factorization. Now, sometimes you've got to do a little cleaning up on some of these. Notice this. This has got a minus in front of it. So in effect, I could put a 1 here and say this is negative 1x squared plus 3x plus 40. Well, remember... The FOIL method, reverse FOIL, doesn't work when you have a negative coefficient in front of the squared term. But that's easy to take care of. Just factor out a minus 1, like it's a GCF. Then the first guy inside will be x squared. The second guy, let's see, since it's a minus, that'll change the sign here. This will be negative 3x, and the last guy will be negative 40. Now, let's multiply this back to make sure we're correct. Negative 1 times x squared is negative 1x squared. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, and we had an x, of course. Negative 1 times negative 40 gives me positive 40. So that is indeed factored correctly. Now, remember, of course, we have to see if we can factor this trinomial. The standing rule, again, in factoring is you must always factor as much as you can. Well, now we got a nice plus 1 in front of that x squared, don't we? Okay, we'll have to remember that this negative 1 is part of our answer. We'll come back and get it in a little bit. Okay, well, let's be optimistic and put our double set of parents down. And since we have x squared here, that means we're going to have x's in the leading guys. Now notice, the minus here is going to give us the signs is negative, so that means we have one of each in the signs. One is positive, let's say I put it there, and the other one is negative. You could have done it the other way around, 
the bigger game will straighten this all out before we're done. Okay, here we go. I want two numbers that multiply together to give me 40. Now remember, this was a minus here, so that means I want the difference. Okay, so two numbers multiply together to give me 40. Since this is a minus, I want their difference to be 3. Well, let's see. 4 and 10 won't work. The difference is 6. Uh, 8 and 5, huh? 8 times 5 gives me 40. And the difference between 8 and 5 is indeed 3. So there we go. We've got a winner here. Now, once again, since the signs are not the same, we have to play the bigger game. 8 is bigger than 5. And the 8 has to go with the sign that matches the center term here. Negative, so where did I put the minus? Over here. So the 8 goes here and the 5 goes there. Now, don't forget, we factored out a minus 1. So we have to bring that along and write it down here. Here it is. So if we were multiplying this out to check it, we'd multiply the two binomials and then multiply everybody by negative 1. Okay, let's take a look at uh, another example here. Okay, and uh, let's see what we got here. Ah, first off, there's a GCF. There's a common 3 you can factor out. So remember, you got to factor a GCF out center later. Do it to begin with because you'll often see some nice things when you do it. Okay, so I factored a 3 out of 3R squared. It leaves me R squared out of 36. 3 goes into 36, what, 12 times? So minus 12R. And then plus and 3 goes into 81, I think 27 times. Okay. Well, now we're all ready to use our reverse foil here because we got a nice plus 1. But stop for a second. This one happens to be one of our shortcuts. Do you see that the first and last terms both have, uh, let's see, do they have it? No, they don't. 27 is not, does not have a nice square root. So I stand corrected. Okay, this is not a perfect square trinomial. We'll have to use our regular reverse foil methods, which points out to you, of course, but if you can't factor any of these guys by the shortcuts, that does not mean they're not factorable. You have to come down and try other things like reverse foil. Okay, here we go. Let's put the double set of parents down and see if we can get this with reverse foil. R squared means we got R's to begin with. The plus on the end here means the signs are double plus or double minus. We, of course, are going to take double minus because that matches the sign of the center term. Okay, then here we go. You see the plus here? That means we want sum. So here it is. I want two numbers multiplied together that give me 27. And I also want the sum of those numbers to equal 12. Well, let's see. When I think of 27, what comes to mind is 9 times 3. Let's check and see if this works. 9 times 3 is 27. Ah, and we wanted the sum. Remember, because of this plus, what's the sum of 9 and 3? It's 12. So this indeed is what we're going to do. And now, since the signs are both the same, both minus here, you can put these anywhere you want. Let's say r minus 9 and r minus 3. Just remember, however, that you have this GCF out. It's part of the answer, so be sure that you write it down like we just did. Well, what we're seeing here is that you sometimes have to do a little bit of cleaning up, okay, to uh, be able to get these guys uh, in a form where the reverse foil works. Here's another example where we've got one. It's got a minus out in front. Well, reverse foil only works with a plus one. But as we've seen before, I can write a 1 behind that minus sign, and I can factor a minus 1. 
out of all of these guys. So if I factor minus 1 out of minus 1m squared, I'll just end up with positive m squared. Factor the minus out of the middle term, it will end up with a plus 14mn. And then the last term, okay, factoring the minus out means this will become plus and 40 in squared. Okay, now let's double check this. Negative 1 times m squared is negative 1m squared. Negative 1 times 14mn is negative 14mn. Negative 1 times positive 40n squared is going to give me negative 40n squared. We're right on the money. Now, let's go ahead and set up our double set of binomials. Here they are. We'll come back and get the negative 1 we factored out, our GCF here, and put it in the answer in a little while. Well, we got m squared to begin with. So that means I've got m's in the first term. Notice, though, that I also have a squared guy in the last term. There's an n squared. So that means we can simply play the same trick we did in front to be able to get the two last guys to multiply and give me an n squared. I'm going to have to have at least a single n in each one of the last terms. So, squared guy in front, you put the uh, two square roots, square root of m squared is m in the front, squared guy in back, the square root of this is n, put those in here. Okay, we took care of the variables. Now, here we go. Uh, next thing we're going to do is go after the signs. Well, we have a plus on the end, so that means we're either going to use double plus or double minus. Take a look at the center term. Center term is plus, so that means we're going to use the double plus. Here it comes, plus and plus. Okay, now, again, it's time for the two-number game. See how it goes? This process is the same. Once you get the signs, play the two-number game. Okay, and of course, we're just talking about the numbers here we're trying to do. We want two numbers multiplied together to give us 40. Uh, and then the plus here means we want the sum to also be 14. Okay, how can you get 40? Well, 4 times 10, okay, gives me 40. And the sum of 4 and 10, oh, bingo. That's the 14 right there. We got lucky and just hit it. So the two numbers, 4 and 10. Okay, the signs again are the same here. So it doesn't matter where you put them. So let's say I put the 4 in the first guy and the 10 in the second. You could have done it the other way. But now make sure that you don't forget to bring down your GCF because that's part of the answer. Okay. Ah, look at this one. We've got uh, a GCF to pull out of here. First off, a 5 will go into all of these. But notice that we have X's going all the way through. The fewest numbers in this last guy, which is 1. So that means we can factor 1X out of all these guys plus the 5. Factor out 5X. Okay. Now, if you factor 5X... What do you have to multiply this guy by to make it look like this first term? Well, what we need is just an x squared. 5x times x squared would give you 5x cubed. Then we have a plus sign. What do you have to multiply the 5x by to make it look like this? Well, 5 times 4. So we know the number 4 is there. And uh, notice we got x squared y. Well, there's only one x here. So we would have to multiply by another x and also by a y. So there we go for that. Okay, moving on to the last guy here. We got a minus sign. And uh, let's see. 5 goes into 180. I think it's 16 times. This is 16 times 5 equal to 180. Okay, so we're going to have 16 here. 
But now, notice we had, of course, a single x with a 5. That takes care of this guy, but we need to have y squared for that. So here we are. Well, you can check this by taking a 5x and multiplying each of these guys back out. And you better get the original terms up here. Now, let's take a look and see uh, what we can do in uh, factoring this guy up. Okay. Uh, here we go. Let's set up our double set of binomials. Boom and boom. We got x squared to begin with, so we got x's in the leading terms. Notice we got y squared in the end, so that means we have y's in the last guys. Now, when you have squares at both ends like this, the center term has to have both of those variables multiplying each other to the first term, or first power, and here it is, x times y. Okay, well, next we go after the signs. The minus here means one of each. Okay, so plus and minus, or minus and plus. So uh, let's say I feel like putting a minus here and a plus there. You could do it the other way, because when you do the bigger game in a moment, we'll straighten that out. Okay, let's see uh, what we can do here. Next thing we try is the two numbers game. Okay, and this is a minus here, so I'm going to want difference. So here we go. I want two numbers multiplied together. Give me 16, whose difference is, uh, actually it's 4. Okay. Well, 16 times 1 gives me 16, but the difference is 15. Uh, let's see. The other thing we could do is 8 times 2. That would give me 16, but the difference between 8 and 2, remember, we want the difference because of the minus here. Difference between 8 and 2 is 6. That doesn't match. Uh, let's see. How else can we get this? Uh, 4 times 4, that would give me 16, but the difference, 4 minus 4 is 0. So, we've tried all the combinations, so here's the result on this one. No combination works. So, this happens to be an example of a problem where we can't factor the trinomial any further. But notice, we did do some factoring here. You see this 5x? We did factor it out, and you are required to do anything you can. So you would have had to just leave it now. It's 5x times this guy in parents. Nothing can we come up with that will be able to factor this further. Okay, one last example down here. Let's work on it. There's no GCF. We got the plus 1 out in front, so this looks like it ought to be pretty simple if it works. Okay, there's my double set of parents. Uh, X squared means I've got X's to begin with. Here we go. Now, we go after the signs. The sign on the last guy is negative, so that means one of each is what we have in signs. Let's say I put the plus here and the minus there. Okay, it's time for the two-number game. Okay, I want two numbers. Multiply together, give me 20. And you see the minus here? Means I also want the difference to be 5. Okay, what two numbers can we multiply together to give me 20? Well, how about 2 times 10? But the difference in that is 8. Okay, so that's not going to work. Let's see, uh... The next thing we could do, besides 2 times 10, I guess we could do 5 times 4. That gives me 20, right? There between 5 and 4 happens to be 1, not 5. Let's see. Are there any other ones that will work here? We did the uh, 20 times 1. That difference will be 19. So I think we've hit all the two numbers multiplied together you can have for uh, getting the answer 20. So, what happens here, nothing works. Okay. In other words, you are trying to come up with your two numbers. 
and you kept trying all the combinations you could think of and the thing still doesn't work then what you simply say is you cannot factor it okay and that means you leave it in the original form well remember if you just made up uh, trinomials with any numbers that popped into your head most all of those are not factorable you buy real numbers okay you will learn something one of these days where you'll be able to factor those but that's not the type of stuff you find in the grocery store it tends to be more in the uh, scientific or engineering lab where you run into that okay well we've worked a number of examples for you here so you should have a pretty good idea how to be able to do all these guys so that's going to get us then right to the point here where we can finally say, okay, we've talked plenty about uh, reverse foil.